Hey, what's going on, guys? Brant here with CPC Bodybuilding. And today, I've got a preview of the Optimum Classic Pro in Shreveport, Louisiana. That's this Saturday, May 20th. And for this preview, I've got a special guest. My guest today is IFBB Classic Pro, Justin Batterina. Justin, how are you, brother? Good, my man. Thanks for, uh, thanks for having me on uh, to do this preview with you. I'm very excited. Um, a lot of people have been digging what you've been doing for the classic physique division. So let's, uh, you know, let's dive in and uh, give the people a cool show. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for coming on. And let's go ahead and jump into the lineup, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen right here. So we've got the uh, classic physique lineup here for Optimum. So as you guys can see here, this is my lineup card, the one on the IFBB Pro. Dot com is actually a bit off. It's got a couple of people listed who aren't doing the show, and it's also missing some people. So this is the most accurate lineup card to date. So we'll start out here with Tomas Adame Hernandez out of Huntersville, North Carolina. And Justin, I know this is a guy that you're very familiar with. He's one of my favorite physiques in classic right now. And he took fourth at Charlotte, sixth at Pittsburgh last week. Just looking at the Pittsburgh pre-judging routine, what do you like about Tomas's physique? I like how honestly stacked he is for a shorter guy, you know, and he flows super, super well with an extremely tight waist. Um, legs are like super, super deep. Um, good poser too, hits everything super, super well. Um, yeah, I, I think he's got a pretty shape, man. Yeah, for sure. I think looking at him, you know, maybe a little bit more back. Um, but he's got a lot of great tools. He comes in conditioned. You know, he's uh, definitely a threat for sure. Absolutely, man. I I love his shape. His lines are just pristine. And he's one of those guys whose lines just, it, it just like comes alive as he poses. One of those guys who just like, I don't think Instagram does him enough justice. Like seeing him in person is just a totally different story. Just yeah, cool. back backstage with him at Charlotte, man, seeing him pump up and stuff. He's a he's a he's a big body for being a shorter guy. You know, he's definitely a, a thick guy with with that you know small waist and clean shape. It makes it look really you know big and overwhelming. Like I said, for being shorter, it's very impressive. Yeah. So that is Tomas Adame Hernandez. Next up, we've got Harold Wright Jr. He is. Man. Texas bodybuilder. So, Justin, I know you've competed against Harold before at the 2021 Texas State Pro. What do you think of him? I've competed against him two times. Uh, Battle okay. of Texas, my pro debut. Uh, and then, yeah, at that show, um, Harold it comes in shredded. And let me tell you something. He is a taller dude. And seeing him backstage, he's a big boy. A big man, I should say. He is, he's an overwhelming body. Um you know, some could argue like he's not, I, I guess, very classic in a sense, but man, is he big. And he does have some really solid shape in some of his poses. I'm not going to lie. His back is crazy. His condition's crazy. Uh, I, I'm I'm a fan of his, man. That's like that hardcore grit, you know. Uh, and he's he's like, I think he's over 50. I think he's over 50. Harold, sorry, brother, for putting you on the spot. But they announced it uh, at uh, Texas State. Uh, they, they, the Sandy announced it like, yeah, you see him here, man. He's a, he's a freak. You know, he's he's crazy. Big arms. You know, a lot of muscle, man. The muscularity is incredibly impressive. So that's Harold Bright, guys. He definitely has a lot of potential in this lineup. Uh, he took fourth at the 2021 Texas State Pro, finishing right behind Justin, actually. And then uh, he took 12th at the Texas Pro last year, and that was a relatively deep lineup. So 12th, not all that bad there in that lineup. But that is Harold Bright Jr. Next up, we've got Luca Corrado out of Italy. He finished 12th last week at Pittsburgh. And I really think that Luca has a tremendous shape from the front. I love his physique in the front shots. Very solid lines. I love this front last spread as well. I think really the only thing that lost him points was potentially uh, just – the the difference in the upper body and the lower body, I think he could probably use a little bit more quads. Um, because I noticed that he did get moved out of the center of the second call out last week. 
when uh, a couple of guys were hitting their front double. So I think that's one thing, maybe playing around with that front double. But I really like Luca's physique, and I, I think he's got a good shot at being first call out in this show. I mean, he was top 10 at a couple of European shows last year, and he's really just got a high ceiling. And I think now that the judges have seen him, they might, you know, they might give him a bit of a reward given that uh, they're familiar with the physique. And here's a shot at Prague last year, actually. So um, you can tell, I mean, he's got the condition, the lines, you name it. It's just a matter of really just having that breakout performance this year. Yeah, I think he, um, looking at him, I think he's got a lot of the tools as well. I think there's certain areas that he needs to kind of fill out more to kind of make his look a little bit more balanced. He hits the, the lat spread a lot, but you can see he kind of hits it higher, right? And he's got great lats, but they kind of look a little bit higher. They sit higher. So, like, if he can fill out that lower lat area, and then maybe, like, some adductors in his legs. He's got great quads and depth to them. Just a little bit more filling out in certain areas, I think, will honestly make his shape. Because you could see that potential in his shape, and he's got the size, right? So, if you, if you fill out certain areas to kind of finish that look, ooh, that's going to be – it's going to be a cool, cool sight. So that's Luca Corrado out of Italy. Next up, we have Bernardo Costa out of Texas. And it's been a while since he's competed. So he competed at the Battle of Texas in 2020, I believe. So a very tall. Yeah. So yep. debut at Texas in 2020. So it's been three years almost. Um, probably, probably closer to two and a half, but. Still a very, very long and intentional offseason. I'm trying to find the photos of his pro debut. Um, there you go. Here are a few. So I think really his big focus has just been filming <laughs> for him. He's a tall guy. And I, I think probably the one thing here that you're going to see that he's been really trying to bring up is the legs. That's the the biggest thing in my mind that needed to come up because the upper body looks very solid, very proportionate arms, great biceps, great lats as well. Midsection is, it, you know, condition could be a touch better, but I think the upper body looks very, very solid there. But the the lower body is really what needed to come up to, to match that upper body. Just, you know. Classic is like new school now he kind of has like an old school classic look but i kind of dig it you know uh if that makes sense you know because new school classic is way different than what it was right uh and this this would flow very very well especially because I, I i believe he is six foot freaking three or four he's a tall tall guy um you yeah, know but like you said upper body is very beautifully shaped great size you know a little bit more from the wheels and i think he has man i mean Took a lot of time off, right? And that, that was, you know, more, more than likely a focus of his. So I'm excited to see him on stage again after a long, you know, time away. So that is Bernardo Costa. Next up, this is a deep cut. Okay, we got Isaac Dobson here, and he is out of what's Wichita Falls, Texas. So another Texas guy. Man, I could not find any social media on this guy, but I found him in the archives of. The 2021 Junior USA's where he turned pro in Class D. So Class D, for anyone who is not aware, is the biggest class in the amateur ranks in classic physique, meaning this dude is huge. So a very tall guy, but it's really hard to know what he looks like given these photos are five years old. I couldn't find anything on the internet other than these. When was this, 2018? This is 2018, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. I can't really judge off of off of this, um, and it doesn't look like the best quality pictures anyway. I mean, yeah, this is back before uh, <laughs> we got out of the the boxer brief phase. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh wow, yeah, wow. Yeah, I guarantee his posing is better. He's bigger now. Uh, you know, it's tough, like you said. Like you probably don't have socials, so tough to see any current shape of his which kind of makes it interesting and fun yeah so who knows who knows what we're going to get out of isaac dobson yeah. wild card <laughs> so 
Again, he turned pro at 2018 Junior USA's with a lot of top classic pros coming out of that show. So definitely right. not a, a, an accomplishment to underestimate. But this next guy is Barry Irving, a.k.a. Sporty. He is out of Atlanta, Georgia, but he is from Louisiana originally. He's from NOLA, and he's going to be competing in his home state. Justin, you saw him pretty recently at Charlotte. He took ninth at that show. What do you like about Sporty's physique? It's just clean. It's clean. It's very clean look. You know, and he he can present it super well, man. He's a he's a great guy. He's a great poser. He's got a great physique. Um, I'd be curious to see what his feedback was from Charlotte, like where they think he can improve upon. Um, I don't know what you think. Maybe a little bit more like chest and back width to like go with because he's kind. Of, he he looks thicker in person than he does in these pictures, and he's got like that flow and those beautiful lines. So I think with maybe a little bit more width and give a little bit more of that wow factor, you know, spreading him out more, taking up more real estate on stage. I think that could really be a you know, uh, change a big change up for for him. But I, I love his physique, and he's a great person. Yeah, very solid dude. Just doing a lot of really important work in, in bodybuilding and in the Atlanta community. Um, but yeah, I'm a huge fan of Sporty's physique too. And I, I totally agree. I think it's really just a width thing because he's got the density, the thickness, the lines. Yeah, he looks just great. He coach. looks good. You know, like look at that. He just like looks super clean. Mm -hmm. um, in this in this pose, he's hitting it very, very well. Maybe a little bit like hamstrings, but um that's yeah, that's a great shot for it. He just well put together. I think that's yeah, yeah. It so well too. So that's sporty guys. Barry Irving competing in his home state of Louisiana this weekend. Next up, we got Keith Jenkins, and Keith is out of South Carolina. His last appearance was at the 2022 Masters World Championships Classic Physique, where he took sixth in the world. Uh, so Keith is over 40. I'm not sure just how old he is, but he looks fantastic for being, you know, that age for one. And I think what I really like about Keith's physique is the lines, just very deep cuts, especially in the quads. And he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he does have very, very good shape as well. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I was going to say from from the from the one or two pictures that you swiped and I was able to see. Uh, very deep leg lines and condition. Um, just a pretty balanced look from head to toe, in my opinion. Yeah. Certain areas to fill out, but, you know, pretty balanced. So that's Keith Jenkins out of South Carolina. Next up, we got Dion Rill, and he did not place at Pittsburgh in his pro debut last week. Really big dude. He turned pro, you can see here, at Junior USA's last year in Class D. It's a super tall guy, but um, really just a matter of filling the frame out. He's still pretty early on in his bodybuilding career. I think he started bodybuilding or even just lifting seriously just five years ago. So just slowly building that physique. And, uh, Looks great. Yeah. That's actually him next to, <laughs> to Annie, Annie at, uh, who won the overall at Junior oh, yeah. last year. So, yeah. But that's Dion Marill out of Castle, Shannon, Pennsylvania. Uh, next up, we've got Ola Shoni Oni out of Arlington, Texas. And he last appeared at the 2021 Tampa Pro where he took second in the Masters division. And um, what do you notice when you look at his physique? His, his arms are huge. He's got good legs too. His arms, his, his wheels. Yeah, yeah, very, very solid physique. Yeah, thick. He does a lot of curls. Yeah, I really like his physique. He'll be at the, the Masters Olympia this year competing. He's coached by Ray Baker, so, you know, he's going to, you know, be on the money with, with everything presentation-wise and just, uh, you know, be very polished as well. So that is Ola Shoni Oni. Next up, we've got Taj Parham, and this is his pro debut. He last appeared – or actually, no, this is not his pro debut – Apologize. He took fifth at 15th at the Norfolk Pro in 2021. Um, so here, I mean, I, I think, you know, he's got a lot of size. 
what do you what do you think from that right picture that it is last appearance? Um, a little bit more triceps. Um, I think condition can be a little bit better through the wheels. A little bit more low lap. Um, but yeah, he's, he looks like a big presence on stage, you know. Yeah, so that is Taj Parham. Next up, we got Caleb Robinson. Now he's making his pro debut. He turned pro in Class B and Class C at 2020 Nationals. And when I look at these photos, I think he's just got a, a very, very clean looking physique. I, I just think that, um, you know, size was really the only thing that he was missing from his amateur look. And that's, you know, kind of how things go nowadays. Most guys who turn pro need that year or two to really put on the size to compete at the pro level. Uh, really clean lines throughout the legs. You can see, you know, everything in the quad sweeps. You can see the sartorius muscle, solid adductors as well. You look at the upper body, plenty of striations throughout the shoulders, very detailed midsection. Uh, I think really it's just been a, a matter of, is he going to be bigger than he was when he turned pro? What do you think, Justin? Two years, correct? Uh, yeah, two and a half years. I think he can be, you know, I'd be curious to see, um, you know, how much tissue he was able to add and how, how much of it stuck, you know, given the fact that he had to kind of come down again, right? Because I feel like sometimes new muscle is always the first muscle to go when dieting down, losing some fullness, some shape, some size. Um, but yeah, like with him, just off of what I saw, looks like just like a matter of time type of thing, you know, more more reps more weight lifted, more, more hours in the gym, um, you know, and then he could really transform his body into something, you know, truly special. You know, I think everyone has the capability to do that. Um, especially when you go from an amateur to a pro, and like you said, take that year or two, and right? it's very beneficial. You know, you'll come back a, di a different, you know, competitor for sure. Yeah. So that is Caleb Robinson and we don't have any recent physique updates, but saw good things from that. Uh, that performance where he turned pro in nationals. Now, next up, we've got Stephen Thames. And this is from his last appearance at the Puerto Rico Pro last year, where he took 10th place in the Open Classic Division, second in the Masters Pro Division. Now, Justin, when you look at this photo, what stands out to you when you look at Stephen's physique? Honestly, uh, he's, a, he's a very thick guy. Um, it looks like he's got some dense muscle all over um you know and, and he's got some from the look of this side angle like some decent shape to go with it right it looks like you know conditioning amongst you know the, you say he plays 10th so this might be like you know ninth eighth 11th you know spots with him it looks like conditioning kind of um could it could improve for him just like it could for the other guys you know so that would kind of make sense um maybe not so him from the rear in the center? Yeah, right in the center. Yeah, so he wins that shot for sure. I mean, but overall, you know, probably a bit more conditioned to kind of break into that top echelon, right? Like kind of really embrace that that last little bit of suck to, to pull that, you know, pull that little bit of body fat and water off and come in a little bit tighter and deeper. And um, I think that would make a difference, you know, with him. So that is Stephen Thames. And last but certainly not least, we have a last minute entry after taking second in a split de decision at Pittsburgh last weekend. So he had first place votes. This is Eric Wildberger out of Brazil. Former men's physique pro took second at San Antonio, finishing behind Chris Hunt last year. And I mean, I, I think these uh, photos and this 4K video from Gilco just really speaks for itself. Seeing him in person last year or last week, I was just absolutely wowed. I think his width is something that just stands out to me. What do you uh, see when you look at Eric's physique? Honestly, he uh, he, he definitely is, has a crazy physique. Um, we look at that shot; it's very conditioned, very complete. You know, maybe if I had a nitpick, you know, a little bit more. Definitely, I would say the arms are the one thing I want to see. You know, come up on on Eric over, you know, over time and, you know, a little bit more back. Um, 
well, honestly, he's he's got all the tools. He, he's a he's a great physique. He's he's definitely you know the I would say more so the front runner coming on the show. Yeah, absolutely. One thing that I think he's fantastic at is he doesn't really have a tiny waist, but he's fantastic at posing around it. He might not be like the best poser in the world, but he knows how to hide his weaknesses, which is very very important body building. And his ribs sit in an interesting way, like how high and high and kind of wide they are. So when he pulls that vacuum, it makes that it, there's more of the vacuum, right, from from head to toe. So it makes it look a lot smaller of a waist. Um, like there, it looks like super, you know, super long vacuum. If that makes sense, it just makes that whole area look a lot smaller, which improves the overall look, the shape. Yeah. So that's Eric Wildberger out of Brazil. So that's our full lineup, guys. What we're going to do now is Justin and I are going to both give our top five picks in order and also pick a winner. So what we'll do is I'll go with my fifth pick, then Justin will go with his fifth, and then we'll go back and forth like that. But I'll uh, I'll go ahead and start the fun here. So my fifth place pick is going to be Bernardo Costa out of Richardson, Texas. So this is his second pro show. And if we go to his, his photos right here, like we said, uh, Justin kind of likened him to like the golden era classic because he's just beautiful structure, especially up top. He's been working on filling out the lower body. And I think given that he's a taller guy, he's going to match up very well with a lot of these guys. And uh, the guys who, or the guy who I have, pick to win the show is going to be a bigger guy. So I think that's also going to kind of play into things as well with the comparison. So my fifth place finisher is Bernardo Costa. Oh. Okay. Going back and forth between two people for the fifth place spot. Um, I'm going to go with Bernardo as well. Yeah, and I was thinking, man, we might have a very, very similar top. And you know what? Just to show you that I'm not just following you, I'm writing this shit down. Oh, bro, I, <laughs> I believe you, man. <laughs> it's also not a big lineup either. I mean, we got like 12 guys, I think. So I just want to see how, how yeah. close. But yeah, so I'm going to go with Bernardo as well. All right. So both of our fifth picks are Bernardo Costa. My fourth place pick might come as a surprise to some people, but, you know, I think he's really got a lot of potential in this lineup. I think his structure is going to carry him far, and he's a bigger guy here. I got Luca Carano. He's also a veteran. He's placed top 10 in European shows. I don't see why he can't place top five here, really. I think he's pretty much a lock for top eight, for sure. Uh, I, I do think he's going to sneak in there, just because I think he's got size on a lot of the guys who are going to finish behind him. So I've got Luca Corrado out of Italy in fourth place. I'm going to go with Barry. I think Barry is going to place fourth. Um, I I think that he's going to come in a lot more improved and um, than Charlotte, right? Because he didn't do anything in between. So he literally took a full month, right? Yeah, so I think that this is going to be uh, – this could be a very crazy look for Barry, in my opinion. If he, you know, is able to fill out certain areas, you know, I know the width's not going to come in a month, but fill out the certain areas and come in even tighter. And he was very conditioned, you know, in Charlotte. So I think he's gonna, I think he's gonna place fourth. All right. So Justin's got Barry Irving in fourth place. My third place is sporty Barry Irving, Justin's fourth place pick. I think. Really what sets him apart is his ability to present his physique. I think that's going to be the big difference here. And he's the best poser in this lineup by far. And I think the judges are going to see that and reward it. So I've got him in third place. So my third place might come as a surprise. However, I I know what I saw in person. And I, and I think that he can definitely place there. And that's Harold. I think that Harold is... Uh, is a freak in his own right and i and i think that many of his poses are very dominating you know um and, and at the end of the day you're judged on the pose itself right so i think that if he just nails it he's gonna 
he's gonna have probably the craziest backside in the show, in my opinion. I'm I, I'm, I'm looking forward to it, and I'll, I put a, I put a little bit of money on it. <laughs> um, you know, he, he's got a crazy look, man. So I got him, I got him at third based off his his size, his condition for sure. All right, so Justin's third place pick is Harold Bright Jr. Man, I was struggling with that because I I wanted to put him top five, but I'm like. He's definitely got the potential too because of you know what he did a couple of years ago. But last year at Texas, I, I was kind of just wondering if we're gonna see that same condition. I think if he's if he's in condition, he's gonna be in that top five. But yeah. uh, my second place pick, probably not much of a surprise here. Uh Tomas Adame Hernandez, fantastic shape, beautiful classic structure and lines, and Right now, one of my favorite, probably one of the most underrated physiques in classic right now. I just, I'm a big fan of Tomas in general. I got him in second place. Me as well. Um, I, like, like I was saying earlier, he's he's got a lot of the tools. He's a stacked, shorter guy. Looks very just. He takes up a lot of real estate. Um, and he's got such a tiny waist and nose and pose and his clean lines, deep lines, good condition. Uh, you know, he, he's deservingly of, you know, second in this lineup for sure. Right. And that just leaves our winner. So I think Justin and I probably both have the same winner, but I won't speak for him. My winner is Eric Wildberger out of Brazil. Gave Michael DeBool a run for his money last week. And I actually had on, you know, had I been judging the show, I probably would have picked Eric uh, just because, you know, in person, he appealed to me a little bit more visually. But I think Eric is on an upper trajectory in classic. Just everything you look for from uh, a classic bodybuilder, I think the posing could probably improve a little bit. That's his one weakness, in, in my opinion. But he knows how to also hide his biggest weakness when it comes to posing. So even though it's not the most polished presentation, he knows exactly what he has to do and he executes all the mandatories very well. Big structure, big frame, a lot of width, great lines, great condition. That's my pick. Today. So yeah, me as well. I think that you you pretty much nailed it. You know, I, you know, watching that uh, individual from Pittsburgh, you know, posing needs to you know improve. Um, and from a physique standpoint, his his arms, in my opinion, how he's got all the tools, man. Crazy physique. I can only imagine what it looked like in person. Um, and again, that's me being nitpicky, you know, nitpicking our winner, right? So, um, Eric, if you if you hear this, man, you have all the tools to not only win the show but do well in the division. Uh, you know, so I'm a fan of yours for sure. All right, guys, you heard it here. So those are our picks. Make sure you guys tune in. I'm not sure if there's going to be a live stream, but if there is, I'll be sure to update this video in the description of the live stream. So that's going to start out at 9 a.m. Central Time. We're prejudging 5 p.m. Central Time for finals. Stay tuned to Instagram and give you guys all the updates there. And before we head out, Justin, where can the people find you? You can uh, find, I, I'm pretty much only on IG. I mean, I have a TikTok and YouTube, but I don't do too much with it. My Just my my name, um, at Justin Batterina. Um, so you guys can follow my journey. All right, guys, you're already here. Make sure you give Justin a follow on Instagram. Also follow me at CPC Bodybuilding. I want to thank you guys all for tuning in to another video. Keep it classic, y'all. See you.